Picture the scene, Celtic on the cusp of glory. By hook, crook, bus, plane, train and automobile, thousands of supporters had made it to Lisbon for the final of the 1967 European Cup. The faithful had won the hearts of the Portuguese people with their exemplary conduct and incredible atmosphere before the match. As the Celtic players lined up alongside their Italian opponents in the tunnel, Bertie Old cleared his throat and began to sing. For it's a grand old team to play for, and it's a grand old team to take. And if you know the history, it's an... Each of the Lisbon Lions joined in, and Glenn Daly's immortal anthem was soon heard by the supporters. The support sang with the players as the team came into view. The enjoyment of the occasion by players and fans, in unison, appeared to mesmerise the Inter Milan outfit and gave Celtic the upper hand. That moment is regaled as one of the most iconic in the history of Celtic Football Club. Throughout the years, supporters have enjoyed singing the Celtic song at many other great times. It is synonymous with the club, a vocal monument to Celtic. However, it is an often overlooked fact that fans are actually singing a combination of two different songs on the terraces. Hail Hail the Celts Are Here and the Celtic Song. The latter is played on its own over the tannoy at Celtic Park before every home match as the teams emerge from the tunnel. Glenn Daly produced the iconic Celtic song at Pie Records Marble Arch Studios in London in August 1961. On his visit to record the immutable track, he had an hour to kill and reportedly went for a roast dinner in the Strand restaurant, which was among the most reputable in the city and boasted a guest list that was littered with celebrity names. Upon devouring the meal, the Kelton born artist is said to have pondered over a second verse of the Celtic song which he felt was inadequate. It was at the restaurant table that a desperate daily became inspired when he recalled the voice of Belfast Celtic fanatic Charles Patrick Tully, who had sung the Antrim Club's classic song at a party in Kenilworth one evening. The lyrics that Glenn Daly remembered hearing Tully slur were part of a short ditty that had been a favourite of Belfast Celtic support for years. We don't care if the money's right or wrong. Damn the hair we care, because we only know that there's going to be a show, and the Belfast Celtic will be there. The words were a perfect fit, with a few changes. Glenn Daly's anthem was complete, and the song was released on a single record in October 1961. Much like the attachment of this land is your land to let the people sing, Hail Hail the Celts Are Here was connected to the Celtic song by Hoop supporters in the early 1960s. Hail Hail the Celts Are Here can be traced back to a 1917 military marching song by D.A. Estran and Theodore Morse called Hail Hail the Gangs Are Here. It was set to the tune of With Cat Like Tread Upon Our Prey We Steal, which was a song featured in an 1879 Gilbert and Sullivan opera named The Pirates of Penzance. The song had been largely plagiarised by Gilbert and Sullivan, who stole the original version entitled The Anvil Chorus, from Italian opera composer Giuseppe Verdi. Verdi had written The Anvil Chorus for an 1853 opera, Il Travatore, which in turn was based on the play El Travador, written by Antonio Garcia Gutierrez in 1836. The lyrics to the 1917 adaption, from which the Celtic chant arose, went as follows. Hail, hail, the gangs are here. We're all friends together in all kinds of weather. Hail, hail, the gangs are here. We can have a lot of fun. A 
swift modification to make the version appropriate for Celtic Football Club was made, and the song was then used on the terraces as a preamble to the Celtic song. As mentioned, the Celtic song is a standalone matchday anthem which holds a historic and enduring place in Celtic folklore. It was first played over the Tannoy at Celtic Park on the 14th of October 1961 prior to a league match against Sterling Albion. However, following its release, it was immediately under threat from the establishment. The media reported on the song in a very peculiar manner, instantly describing it as inflammatory, potentially offensive, and a possible catalyst for old firm trouble. The Daily Mail even ran a story in October 1961 with the headline, Police Condemn New Celtic Rallying Song. The article went on to say, Glasgow Police attacked yesterday an Englishman's plan to give Celtic supporters two rallying songs. One of the songs, both have already been recorded, tells of the death of Celtic and Scotland goalkeeper John Thompson, who died 30 years ago. The recording company, and who organised the recording session, is C.P. Stanton, who runs Glasgow Jazz Club Promotions Limited. It is ridiculous to suggest these records could cause more trouble, he said last night. Common sense eventually prevailed, and the Celtic song lives on as the soundtrack to the boys becoming champions of Europe six years later, and right up until the present day. It continues to have an impact, and for that, Celtic fans owe a debt of gratitude to Charlie Tuddy, Belfast Celtic, and Glenn Daly.